Yeah, there are other things, there are other questions that I'm thinking about, right? Go for uh, it. Uh, another one would be, you know, as you're starting to look at politicians, uh, uh, you know, more and more involved in the space, uh, one thing that's going to be fascinating is like, who, who are our real quote unquote friends, right? It's easy to, to come out and support a Bitcoin when it's growing and it's exploding. And, you know, you, the politician can see the dollar signs in kind of uh, signaling for it publicly. It's another thing when we're in a bear market and it's not the sexy thing and it's not, you know, maybe not even popular to, to be talking about it at the moment. You know, are they still going to come out and defend it? I, I don't know. I, my bet says, my gut says probably not. Uh, you know, I think that maybe you have uh, Lummis. Maybe there's a couple other ones who like actually care about Bitcoin. But I would say for the most part, they're just there to get more votes and figure out how to, you know, co-opt our movement. So I think that's going to be another interesting thread. And then, you know, the biggest thing that I'm paying attention to specifically for Bitcoin is the resolution of uh, the basically the macroeconomic crisis we've thrown ourselves into. Uh, and this is something that I was talking about a little while ago on the Twitter space. But, you know, you have a scenario right now where the EU is is teetering on, you know, dissolving. I mean, there's no other way to, to kind of uh, play it. You've got... Uh, really two factions. You have the pigs countries, uh, Portugal, Italy, uh, Greece, and Spain. Ireland sometimes is thrown in there. Uh, they are all relatively importers, uh, uh, right? Like they, they import more than they export. They are high in debt a lot of times. These are the countries that basically got uh, bailed out by Super Mario Draghi after the great financial crisis in 08. And, and you know, if he hadn't done that, it looked like, you know, the EU could have toppled then, right? And what ended up happening is that the European Central Bank said, all right, we'll just buy the debt from all of these Southern European countries and basically become a backstop. Well, they continue to do that. Uh, you know, the ECB is standing up kind of this, this Southern countries of, of the EU. Um, and that's fine because it was fine because the EU was a net exporter. Um, and, and so because of that, you know, you still had like demand for the currency coming from abroad. Well, with the whole uh, uh, Russia gas crisis, uh, where you know Germany and other countries got cut off from from you know Russian gas, their costs for energy crept up so much that it actually erased their uh, uh, you know their net exports. So now Germany even and all these other countries are now importers, net importers as well, which has caused uh, a demand for the euro to cave. You saw euro hit parity with dollar earlier. Uh, and so you're actually looking at a scenario where like the euro is itself weakening. Well, the problem with the ECB is that it has only really one mandate, which is to uh, maintain the stability of the euro. It's not to uh, protect the entire EU and prevent it from dissolving. And so there's this starting to form this like uh, uh, perverse incentives where if they're going to protect the euro, that means raising rates. But if they raise rates and they stop uh, uh, purchasing, you know, uh, debt of southern countries, which would protect the value of the euro, right? By doing that, you raise rates, you stop printing money. Uh, then you run into a scenario where no one's buying pigs, nations uh, debt. And at that point, they they default on their debt. And so uh, uh, if pigs, nations default on their debt, again, this is Portugal, Italy, Greece and Spain you're running into a problem where like they need to re-denominate in their own currency so that they can actually, you know, print their way, inflate their way out of it. That's the, kind of their only, only choice. And so uh, uh, that's like starting to happen. I mean, the ECB actually raised rates uh, 25 basis points last week. And, you know, at the same time, you saw Super Mario uh, step down as the, the prime minister of Italy. So, I mean, you're seeing some of the machinations of this happen right now. This is very important to pay attention to. Uh, the alternative would be if uh, uh, the northern countries, you've got like, you know, kind of Scandinavia plus Germany, which have been the economic powerhouse. Uh, and I'll explain why kind of this, all this matters with Bitcoin, right? But you have the economic powerhouse that have been these net exporters that are seeing the inflation in the system. And they're saying, wow, okay, uh, uh, we don't wanna keep printing all this money we need to tighten up so that like, we don't all see this rampant inflation to, to prop up the, the pigs nations, right? And so 
if if the inflation isn't curbed, if the spending by the government isn't stopped, then the northern countries will all elect their own populist leaders, similar to how the UK brexited, and and you will see like Greece or sorry Germany and like some of these northern countries exit the EU on the other end, right? So the reason why this is interesting to me for Bitcoin is because uh, there's not a lot of solutions for Europe, and if that happens, then you're going to see huge amounts of currencies basically being minted and printed overnight. Uh, a lot of people are not going to like go back to that system of, you know, redenominating their debts on a new currency that's also backed by nothing, right? These, these currencies need to be derived from something. And so Bitcoin is a huge answer for that. Uh, uh, if that doesn't happen, the only alternative is for someone like the US to step in and basically do yield curve control of the EU. Uh, uh, that is not our mandate, I can tell you that. Uh, and it's going to cause us to start printing, I mean, even more money than we imagined printing for COVID if we're having to prop up the entire EU with our uh, Federal Reserve. And Wait, so, what would that look like? You, what, do you, what do you mean when you say yield curve control of the EU? Basically, uh, uh, the, the idea is that, so, okay, let me back up. What is yield curve control? Yield curve control is basically your uh, uh, attempt at kind of controlling the the in, uh, the interest rates on a bond and and by doing that you're actually putting that bonds uh, uh, payout below what the inflation rate is so anyone who's purchasing bonds is like all right well then I don't want uh, or if anyone who's holding bonds I don't want to hold this bond I'm losing money in real terms right and so then they sell it well if you sell bonds then uh, you need a buyer and so uh, if you if no one's buying, then the, the rates start raising and that causes the debt to be higher. And so what the EU does usually is they go in and backstop it and they say, all right, we will just buy all bonds at this price level and basically control the yield curve, uh, control the yield on it, right? And so they can't do that anymore because they've printed too much money and there's inflation and all this kind of stuff, right? And so the only person who could really be in a position to do anything about it is, is Powell uh, and, and the Fed. And so if the US did that, then you would see just massive printing of the dollar and you would get into the same basic macroeconomic set that got us from 2009 to today, which you've seen what Bitcoin has done. So that's kind of the, the, the other case of Bitcoin. Like either way you kind of slice this, this is incredibly bullish for the price of Bitcoin. It's just, it kind of comes at the expense of stability in somewhere like Europe.